Hello and welcome back. I'm just doing a little stock take here of some of my Singer 700 series machines. And there are a couple of them that I'll be keeping because they're in good condition. And if you've seen my 1000 uh, subscriber special, you would have seen the uh, 726 uh, featured in there. And that's a machine that I learned to sew on, so I'll be definitely keeping that and the rest of the machine there's a couple of machines that have broken and so i've got a total of eight there i've got four 760s two 766s and two 727s so some of the machines i haven't assessed and as i say a couple of them have got broken cam stack gears and if you take a look in uh, my video on the buyer's guide i go through the cam stack gear and what can happen with those. Uh, you may have noticed also that uh, I'm recording from my conservatory at the moment because of the coronavirus uh, COVID-19 lockdown. There's a lot less traffic so not that we live on a busy street it's just that uh, there's hardly any traffic so it's quite good to use the conservatory just for the natural light and you might notice a little bit of noise mainly just birds and whatnot so it's not too bad the odd dog maybe and uh, the odd car here and there so it's just going to go through some of the uh, machines and do a little assessment out of all those machines i've actually only got two manuals two original manuals i've got one for the 706 726 and one for the 746 slash 766 so I don't have one for the 760 but um, part of today's video is really just to take a wee look at what the different features are for the different models so we can figure that out just by you know what stitches are available and the nice thing about these manuals is it clearly states uh, not just maintenance and care but also what accessories should come with the machine as well and normally they have a little a little guide under the top flap there as to what stitches are available so we should be able to glean some information from there accessories and the likes there so I guess we'll start with the 726 that's the machine I'm most familiar with this one I haven't assessed at all. So, yeah, looking pretty grubby. Foot controller is present, although I don't think it's the original. I haven't seen one with a foot controller like that. They're normally the clamshell type. Uh, whether that's original or not, I don't know. I don't think so. And I would say that that's probably come from a smokers household but look at that it's quite yellow I've never seen them go yellow like that this is all metal so it's not like the plastics are yellowing the 726 you can't remove the buttonhole attachment it's it's locked in there you can't replace cams in this machine so you, you're really limited to the the built-in uh, patterns here so you can we've got straight stitch zigzag, a tricot stitch, a blind hemming type stitch and another sort of blind hemming or overcasting type stitch. So that's the, that's the extent of the stitch selections on the 726 and of course uh, button holding. Mm, I can actually smell the cigarette wafting off this. <laughs> This is the 760. I haven't assessed this machine either. Uh, well, I may have actually, and at some stage, it looks like it sews. That looks like a piece of material I would have sew, sewn on there. It looks like it's sewing. And from the, from what I can see, just uh, because I don't, I don't have the manual for this one, but the the accessory box is a is a larger type box like that with a lift out tray and the reason it's so large is because it's got the flexi stitch pattern discs there so the, 
the flexi discs just fit in in the top there and you know you can remove and reinstall other discs so unlike the 726 you can interchange discs that's the button holding disc and of course you've got your built-in stitches with this model as well the 760 so we've got straight there blind hemming type stitch zigzag that is a basting type stitch there's a, a tricot scallop and a couple of decorative type stitches there so it's got a few more built-in stitches than the 726 and but generally on these machines the touch and sew style machines all of the controls are the same you know pretty much they're all similar all singer badges missing off this one this is probably the more top end of the machines that I've got, the 766, can't quite read the badge there, but it is a 766. And that has got the a lot of built-in stitches, including flexi stitches, so they're like your stretch style <coughs> stitches. You have a look there, you, you may have seen this machine on a previous video, the 700 series overview video, I'll put a link up around here somewhere for that. But you can see here that you've got a lot of built-in type stitches and that's selected uh, through this selector dial here. And you can't remove the buttonhole cam here that's fixed in position, a bit like the 726 model. And we've also got the built-in stitches here as well on the 766 model. So we've got straight, like a blind hemming. Actually it looks the same as the 760. I think, except that obviously the 760 has the cams that you can drop in, as we saw before, rather than these other built-in stitches here for your flexi stitches. Stop the press. I just found a Singer 786. When I was putting away my other machines, I found this 786. Uh, it's looking pretty rough, but uh, wherever I've said in this video that I've got three different models, well, actually looks like I've got four. So I'll do a quick rundown on this machine. So again, it looks like the 786, uh, apart from being a slightly different colour, sort of a brownie type goldy colour. It has the similar stitch functions, if not identical stitch functions, to the other models that I've got. Both the 766 and the 786. They both have the same stitch layout for the built-in stitches. Uh, so the differences between uh, these two models and the 760 is that the 760 has a basting stitch built-in. And these two models, the 766 and the 786, have this uh, sort of a, like a rampart type. I'll, I'll sort of think of that as a rampart on a, on a castle wall or something. That's the how I explain that stitch. And the other difference is this last stitch here is like a triangular type shape. Whereas the 760 has a slightly different pattern here in that last selection. Still got the badge on it, this one. And if we have a look under the lid here, pattern stitches there. And some of the stretch stitches. There's quite a few more than the 766 model. So a, a very similar model to the 766 really, with a few more stretch type stitches. I think that's uh, the only difference there that I can see anyway. You can see here the difference in the hand wheel design too between the this is the 746 shown here, and the 766 has also got this type of hand wheel, and the, as does the 760 and the 786, as opposed to that style of hand wheel, 706 is shown here, 
726 is the uh, same as this type of hand wheel and a slightly different motor mounting configuration as well. If we have a look at the 786 here and it's got that style hand wheel, smaller and also it's belt driven down to a, a pulley on the motor there and the motor's horizontally mounted and I've got a video showing the replacement of the motor mounts if you want a closer look at how that is configured uh, you can take a look at that video where I replace the motor mounts down under in the guts of the machine here and that video will link in up here and if we have a quick look in the bottom here you might be able to see the motor pulley here and a horizontal type orientation of the motor there with a few added cobwebs a little bit of rust I think this machine's been a little bit damp and if we take a look at my 726 here this is the larger type hand wheel you can see there the vertical shaft here from the motor so the motor is vertically mounted and that worm gear meshes with the gear here on the hand wheel well it's not actually attached to the hand wheel as such it's you can see it's sprung loaded there as well gives a little bit of uh, sort of dampening effect and if we have a look underneath we can see the motor configuration is quite different vertically mounted motor made in France so that's quite different to the 760 series and the 786 the other thing I noticed while I was uh, looking at those motors is the actual flatbed is quite different this on the 726 here flatbed just pops in like so and there's a release button here and the bed on the uh, this crusty old 786 here you pull the bed this way it's tight because I think it's a bit I think this machine's a little bit uh, seized up and then just drop that like so and that gives you your free arm there and then just back into position there and just another sort of minor difference is the case this is the case for the 766 the handle it's got a sort of metal linkage type arrangement and the handle sits flush here whereas this case here this is for the 786 has more of a, a plasticky sort of handle it sort of retracts on a springy type arrangement there so yeah just a minor difference with the case handles the other thing I thought was quite interesting on this machine is this label here sold and serviced by Benina Sewing Centre in Nelson here that shop's actually still open still running uh, but could this just have been a label put on when the machine was serviced or did they actually sell these machines I I doubt that Benina would have sold Singers so maybe that's just a service sticker and I've just noticed here too on the um, manual for the 706 slash 726 the 726 must be the um, free arm like the one I've just shown you and this must be the 706 with the flat bed so ideal for mounting into a table likewise with the manual for the 746 766 I think that this is the 746 with the flatbed shown here and the 766 has the free arm removable bed option the 766 and obviously the 746 model as well comes with this handy reference card here so you can dial up what page of the manual you may be looking at and um, it shows you what stitch functions are available in that mode 
also what presser foot you need to use, what your settings should be, tension settings, and your cam stack gear settings, speed, stitch length, things like that. So, and that can just be changed like so. So we get to page 29 of the manual. So obviously button sewing. Page 23, button holding. Shows you all the settings in red there. And it's also got a similar thing on the other side for different functions. Chain stitching. So really handy. The manual, I really like the manual. The manuals are really nice for these machines. Uh, even just the, the cover is, you know, sort of the machine nestled down in all this fabric here and colour, you know, matching threads there and whatnot, little flowers and bits and pieces. Pretty nice. Nice spiral bound manual. I love spiral bound manuals. You can lay them flat and, uh, or, fold the other page under if you don't need it. So we've just got a like an index here and the, the nicely laid out manuals you know sh showing you here all the parts of the machine all the bits and pieces here power plug it lists all the accessories nicely laid out there and then bam straight into selecting the correct needle and thread this chart here so that's always really a good place to start and then obviously threading and winding bobbin and then just off to the basics of straight stitching a little bit of tension instruction there straight stitching special settings setting the presser foot and temporary stitching chain stitching that's a really handy feature I use that quite a bit Chain stitching, built-in pads, zigzag, flexi stitches, two-step buttonholes, sewing buttons, sewing the professional way. This is tailor tacking, simulated tailor tacking. Um, all sorts of different tips and hints there, nicely laid out. Uh, zip foot, you know, edge guides, zigzag, uh, lingerie, type seams, flat fouling, and it shows you how to sew around a corner and do darts and blind hemming, stretch sewing, uh, darning, free motion embroidery type uses, more chain stitching, blank blanket binding, inserting lace, you know, Turkish stitch, smocking, bagoting, Monograms, applique, twin needle, tubular bed sewing. So that's uh, you know what's otherwise called a free arm. It's sort of doing your uh, around your sleeves and pant legs, things like that. And then we go into a bit of maintenance here, lubrication, cleaning, replace the bulb, removing the plates. Converting to a treadle drive, that would be an interesting thing to try out. Convert this sort of 1970s style machine to a treadle. I quite like the idea of doing that. And then just a sort of a quick, uh, well, quick reference guide really, just problem solving. And then even down to a personal measurement chart here. Checklist for home service. Troubleshooting guide here, pretty good, and an index at the back there. So nice, nice little manual. Let's quickly go through the 726 manual. That actually looks like it's installed in a table there, and obviously, or yeah, potentially, you know, that could be power driven or treadle driven. Uh, so yeah, just a. Just have a quick flick through that, I mean there's not much more over and above the other manual I would say. Fairly similar sort of sort of thing there. Button holding. All 
the rest of it in there. So yeah, nice, nicely laid out manuals and really easy to read. So quite nice. So there we have just a uh, overview of the different types of model that I own. Anyway, I, I'm pretty sure there's a there are quite a few in the range. Uh, the 788 I have not seen. I've only actually seen the ones that I've got here. By the way, that bird you might be able to hear in the background is called a Tui, native bird of New Zealand. And we don't normally hear them out the front like we do here now because there's not a lot of traffic around, which is good. So I hope you enjoyed that little look at the differences in those three 700 series models and I thank you very much for watching.